Hey, I'm William Peebles, and I'll be presenting our work on the Hessian penalty, a week prior for unsupervised disentanglement. Ample prior work has tackled the problem of learning disentangled representations, such as InfoGAN. What does it mean to disentangle a neural network? Intuitively, we think it means that if we train a generative model G on a dataset like Clever, which has variations spanning shape, color, and position, what we want to get is something like this. Notice how each Z component changes the image. Z0 changes position, Z1 changes color, and Z2 changes shape. In fact, this is the result of our method. Regardless if the object is a square or a sphere, brown or green, Z0 changes the vertical position. In other words, the change caused by the Z0 component is somewhat blind to both shape and color. Let's make this intuition a little bit more formal. The mathematical language to describe how each component changes the image is naturally the derivative. If we want the change caused by Z0 to not depend on, say, Z1, then this derivative should be invariant to Z1. A great way to measure this invariance is by taking yet another derivative, this time with respect to Z1. If this value is large, then it means that Z0's effect on the output is strongly dictated by Z1 and vice versa. So we'd like for this value to be small. We can look at all of the pairwise interdependencies between the Z components. The Hessian matrix of second derivatives contains exactly this information. In this paper, we propose minimizing these pairwise interdependencies. In other words, we want to regularize the Hessian to be diagonal, done here by taking the sum of squared off-diagonal Hessian terms. We call this regularization term a Hessian penalty. It's reasonable to be concerned about the efficiency of computing anything involving a Hessian during training, but luckily, it turns out that we can rewrite the loss term to be a variance over second directional derivatives using Hutchinson's estimator. Here, the v-vectors are random Rademacher vectors. These second directional derivatives can be quickly approximated with finite differences. Here's a PyTorch-style implementation of the Hessian penalty. It only takes a few lines of code to implement. In this paper, we show results applying it to generative adversarial networks as a regularizer, but we know that the Hessian penalty is a model agnostic approach to disentanglement that doesn't require architectural modifications, unlike most existing popular disentanglement algorithms. Now we'll move on to experiments. First, we'll show visual results when training or fine-tuning progressive GAN with the Hessian penalty. Then, we'll show that the Hessian penalty can turn off unneeded Z components when a generator's latent space is over-parameterized. And finally, we'll show that the Hessian penalty can be extended to learn interpretable directions in a pre-trained generator's latent space, and we'll show results on big GAN. For our progressive GAN experiments, we use a 12-dimensional latent space. Image-to-image -image translation is a popular problem setting for learning manipulations like edges to shoes. Can we train an unconditional progressive GAN on the data and encourage it to disentangle a Z component that controls edges to shoes? For our first experiment, we create a dataset consisting of a mixture of the edges and shoes from the popular image-to-image -image translation dataset. We then train an unconditional GAN on this data. Baseline progressive GAN doesn't cleanly disentangle the edge-to-shoe factor variation. However, after fine-tuning with the Hessian penalty, the 6Z component does control it. Here we show a bunch of components learned by a progressive GAN trained from scratch with the Hessian penalty as a regularizer. In addition to the edge-to-shoe component, it disentangles factors like azimuth, height, elevation, and openness. We can also compare the representation learned by InfoGAN. It fails to achieve a similar quality of disentanglement. Now we'll show results on clever images with four factors of variation. On the right, we show four Z components that progressive GAN learned, and then on the left, we show those same Z components after fine-tuning with our regularizer. The Hessian penalty successfully uncovers components that control shape, horizontal position, color, and vertical position, although the disentanglement is imperfect. And again, we'll compare against InfoGAN, which has qualitatively worse results than our method. Next, we're going to move on to investigating what happens when we apply the Hessian penalty to over-parameterized latent spaces. In virtually all circumstances, we don't know the number of true factors of variation in our data. 
So our generative models are likely to be either over or under parameterized. For example, in this case, we're using 12 Z components to model just four factors in our data. An ideal disentanglement algorithm should learn a sparse representation that only makes use of four factors. Let's see what happens in practice with baseline progressive GAN. As an extreme case, we create a variant of Clever that has only one factor of variation, position along a diagonal axis. Visually, baseline progressive GAN uses all 12 Z components to model the data. Let's see if we can come up with a really easy way to quantify this concept. Intuitively, we'd like to rank the Z components based on how much they control G. A simple way to do this is to just take a per pixel variance of G's output as we change one Z component and leave the others fixed. We can then average the results over all of the pixels and do this over several samples. We call this the activeness of a component. Returning to our progressive GAN, we can plot all 12 of its activeness scores. Note that they're all relatively uniform. That means G depends on all of them. Here's what the activeness scores look like for a model trained with the Hessian penalty. All but a single component is turned off by our method. We can also take a look at activeness scores for clever simple. Again, the trend holds that baseline ProGAN uses all of its components relatively uniformly, even though there's only four factors in the data. But training with the Hessian penalty turns off half the components. We highlight the components that were not turned off. What about a situation in which G is now under-parameterized? In other words, there are less Z components than factors in the data. ProGAN learns a very chaotic representation where it's hard to interpret any of the factors. In contrast, the Hessian penalty results in much smoother latence. All right, finally, we'll move on to showing direction discovery results in BigGAN. Vector addition is a popular way to manipulate images in generative models. Here, it's done by moving in latent space in a direction D with a step size eta. Can we discover interpretable disentangled directions in an unsupervised fashion? To approach this problem, we randomly initialize a matrix of directions A. Here, each column of A is a direction in Z space that we'll learn. To perform vector arithmetic, we sample one column of A, done now by multiplying it with a one-hot vector, Wi, where I denotes the entry that's one. Then we'll add that direction times some step size to our initial Z vector. Before we were taking the Hessian penalty with respect to Z, because we wanted the Z components to be disentangled, but here we're going to take the Hessian penalty with respect to Wi, because we want the columns of A to be disentangled. We run this optimization learning A and without any other losses, and note that G is kept frozen throughout learning. Here we show some interesting directions learned by our method. First, we'll show rotation for dogs, then zooming, and smush nose. Next up, for ImageNet churches, we can show rotation, shifting, and colorization. Okay, let's compare our learn directions against some baseline methods. BigGAN Z components are actually surprisingly interpretable and disentangled to begin with. For example, here's a Z component that seems to do a decent job at performing rotation. Here's a rotation direction from a recent unsupervised discovery method as well. And finally, here's the rotation direction our method learns. Note that it's the only one that properly keeps the animals aligned when rotating. Next, let's look at zooming. BigGAN does a pretty reasonable job again at disentangling zooming, although we can see that it sometimes flips objects. Here's the zooming direction from Voinov and Babanko, which also makes the image more red. And finally, here's our learned zooming direction. Ours doesn't flip the objects, and it also doesn't change the color of the image. As a negative, uh, our method does not do as good a job at finding fine-grained, disentangled factors in BigGAN. To give one example, our method couldn't find a direction that controls lighting, as well as the Z component in BigGAN. Okay, let's wrap things up with a brief discussion about limitations. The Hessian penalty can, in principle, be applied to any intermediate feature space of a generator. In practice, though, we sometimes find that applying it too early fails to produce any disentanglement. Uh, unfortunately, though, also applying it too late in the network, notably pixel space, can sometimes cause significant visual artifacts without improving disentanglement. We think a promising direction for future work is finding a principled way to select where to compute the Hessian penalty. Check out our paper for more details. Thanks.